All right. I have a conspiracy theory I need to get off my chest. It's a Linux-based conspiracy theory. I've, it's actually been eating at my soul for several months. I just need to get it out there. Maybe someone else will will agree with me on this, okay? But it's driving me crazy, okay? Um, it, it makes me feel like I'm from an alternate universe. In fact, that might actually be what it is. It might be, you know, the Mandela effect. You know, this is supposed to be the... Oh, I, I remember Nelson Mandela dying in jail. Oh, I don't remember C-3PO has a silver leg. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And therefore, you conclude you must be from an alternate universe. That's how I feel. Okay, I feel like I must be from an alternate universe. Here is my conspiracy theory. Okay, these things, app images, snaps, flat packs. I was born in a universe where these things did not exist. Okay, allegedly... In this universe, they are supposed to have been around for years, um, and I don't know, they're very common. In fact, I looked up and looked it up, and there are like people doing videos on them years ago, but I had never heard of any of these things until only a couple months ago, and theoretically, me as a, a famous Linux content creator, I, I would have run across these eventually at some point, okay, even if I wasn't using them. In this video, I want to talk about these and why I don't use them okay because um i think they're i, I don't want to live in this universe let me put it that way i think these things are terrible i've mentioned some of the reasons i don't like them but i want to i want to make it a little bit more complete and i'm going to hope that i get it all in this one session okay so here's the deal what are app images snaps and flat packs if you don't know just turn off the video you're in for a world of hurt because these things are terrible they'll make your life miserable they're nothing but frustration okay but what they are supposed to be are universal package managers for Linux. Um, so, except for they're exactly the opposite of that. Okay, let, first, let's think about the alleged problem in Linux. The alleged problem, because this is one of these, it's, it's one of these problems that, like, I guess noobs to Linux really fret about, but once you get into it, you just, like, don't care. But the problem, allegedly, is that they're all, oh, they're too many. I'm not going to do it in the dumb soy dev voice. I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm going to respect my opponents. Um... You know, there are, there's this problem that there are too many different, different distributions. There's too much so-called fragmentation. That is, I might use um, Ubuntu, my friend might use Arch, my other friend might use Gentoo, and that means I'm going to use AppGit as my package manager. He's going to use Pac-Man, he's going to use uh, Emerge. Uh, I might have a friend that uses Fedora. I don't. Do, do people in the world actually exist that use Fedora? I, I don't know if that's just an internet meme, but I don't even know what Fedora has. They have one of those. Is it like Yum? Is that it? Or is that so? Who cares? Who cares? But either way, there are different package managers on Linux. Okay, that is the alleged problem. That's an issue. Okay, because oh, if I if I run Arch and I have a new Ubuntu server, those are different things. So it's I don't know. Oh, my brain is gonna break. Um, you'll be fine. Um, now, this alleged solution is to use one of these things. Now, in real life, okay, first off, you should be, right now, you should be going to your image folder and getting that one XKCD uh, comic that is like, um, uh, oh, there are a hundred different standards of Linux package managers. Well, okay, we'll make another one that uh, is universal. Oh, well, now there's a hundred and one standards. That's basically how it is, except for it's way, way worse, okay? Because... Here's what happens. It used to be, if you were just a normie Ubuntu user, you just had to worry about AppGit. That's all you had to do. You, or you, you might have to figure out how to use PPAs, but that still is really just a part of app, you know, the AppGit system on Ubuntu. Okay? But now that is not the case. You have to know AppGit. You have to know Snap. That comes with Ubuntu by default. And everyone the, on the internet is going to tell you to use Flatpak or AppImage to install install some kind of program. The first thing that people tell you to do, if something is not in the main Ubuntu app get repositories, they're going to tell you, oh, just, oh, just use Flatpak. Oh, just use app image. That's now. So now what happens is instead of the way it used to be, where at least individual end users had one package manager they had to worry about, now they might have four. Now they might have way more frustration. And of course, that means pulling redundant dependencies, that means, uh, you know, things messing up, things not being compatible, stuff like this, nothing but frustration. Now, there are alleged benefits to this. Oh, actually, oh, all right, let me, I, I pulled this page up, I pulled this GitHub, let me explain what this is. This is when I first came onto the Snap and Flatpak Mandela Effect universe. This guy opened an issue, a GitHub issue, 
And he's like, I installed Snap. Why, why am I doing it in the voice? Who cares? I installed Snap, blah, blah, blah. Basically, stuff broke. Actually, that's a common that's a common theme whenever you're do, dealing with any of these package managers. Everything's going to break. Everything around them is going to break. None of it is going to be compatible. Everything just, is going to be frustration. Okay, but anyway, he's having font problems. And I was like, what is Snap? I don't, I don't know what this is. And if, put yourself in the shoes of someone like me who had literally never heard this term. He says this. I, I just remember like being flabbergasted when I read this. Like, what is this guy talking about? He says, snaps, as in Linux packages format from Snapcraft. I installed Snappy. And then I went to uh, installed some Snap packages from the Snappy store. And I was just like, what? What is this guy talking about? I've never heard it. I, I forget what I actually said here. I said something like... Uh, oh, yeah, it sounds like it comes from, like, a Dr. Seuss dimension. Yeah, it's like, oh, wow, my snappy full snap fulls from, you know, Snapopolis. That's what it sounds like. I don't, it's so weird. Um, but anyway, what was, what was I going to say? I was going to say something important. Okay, so the, the real issue is there's an alleged benefit that these things are supposed to give. Um, and that is, well, multiple alleged benefits, and all of them are bad, okay? The main thing is they are not real package managers, you are not pulling down programs with their dependencies and installing them on your system in the way that uh, AppGit or Pacman or Emerge or any other Linux package manager does. That's not how they work. They have their own, they don't use the the Unix file system in the, the typical way. Uh, instead, when you install an app, it pulls that app and all of its dependencies, okay? So they used to not even have dependency management. So you'd, if you installed 20 different programs that required some dependency, you would have 20 different forms of that dependency. I think that might, I think Flatpaks fix that so you don't have a million gigabytes for all your programs. Um, but Snap, I don't know, I don't know if Snap's fixed that. But here, here's the issue, okay? Many issues with this. Um, let's say, actually, actually, there's a site. I think I pulled it up a second ago. So what is it? Flatkill.org. So there's this little site. Um, and they know, well, they note this in terms of security updates, but this is actually true of any updates. The issue is, if you have all of these apps that have included in their own containers, they have these different dependencies. Well, what happens if there's a security flaw in one of those dependencies? What happens if you need to update that for something else? Okay. Well, that means that you, you know, if you have snap and flat pack and all this kind of stuff installed, they're not going to be able to properly, you, you have different versions of a, a, a uh, obsolete, you know, program dependency that might have security flaws. Uh, they actually mentioned one here. What is it with like the, the calculator or application or something like that? You can look at it. Um, the other thing is a lot of people say, oh, well, there's a, there's a benefit to having sandboxed applications because, oh, well, yes, they don't properly interact with anything else on the system. Oh, yeah, Snap and Flatpak, like the, if, they, if they even succeed at reading your GTK theme to get, you know, your color theme or anything else external to the system, that's a miracle. But even, even if that's a flaw, that's no big deal because at least it's more secure. But it isn't more secure. This site actually notes it very simply because um, basically all of these programs have write permissions uh, to be able to write in the user's home directory. If you can do that, you can do anything because you can do something as simple as, oh, I'm going to echo something into the bash RC and say, oh, uh, in the background, download this malicious script and run it. Okay, send all your, uh, send all your good stuff to, to me so I can monitor you or something like that. Okay, you know, have a key log or any, anything, anything you can do. So the idea that these are more secure is just nonsensical. Like, I, I, I think it's a good example. Like, these are marketed, like Flatpak and Snap are marketed to the public as if they're supposed to be easier to use when they're not. You're going to run into, like, crazy problems when you're, you're dealing with them. Uh, because they don't interact properly with the rest of a, a Unix-based system. Um, but they're allegedly marketed under the idea that they're made for the, like security reasons, where I don't think that's true at all. I think it's like, I, I think it's more for the, the efficient, the, it being easier for the developers. Oh, we'll just develop this and tell them all to use that for this platform. Uh, we're not going to bother to do anything else. We'll just have it pull the dependencies um, automatically and we'll just manually hard code them. That's the other thing. If you have, um, you know, the other issue is 
Uh, if you have, let's say you require, or different apps might require a slightly different version of a package. So you have like m all these different versions of a package. Whereas if you were just using a package manager like Pac-Man or AppGit in the proper way that you're supposed to be using, you don't have to have that. Everything you do, the maintainers just keep it up to date. That's just how that it's supposed to work. Um, I've said before, like one of the reasons that people use these things is not necessarily because they're actually easier to use, or at least at the beginning they seem e or easier to use. Because you know Ubuntu, you get this nice little thing that oh well here just click and install that, and that's all. That's all you have to do. It's it's easy. It's super easy. Um, but uh, it's it's just uh, I. You know, you, you use like a, a, an operating system like Ubuntu that's like a slower release. It's not like Arch. You know, on Arch or Artix, right? You have you have up to date programs all the time, and you have this massive. You have the AUR where you can basically download anything. Okay, you can just get Steam if you really want it. You can get all these proprietary junk software that they offer on Snap and Flatpak and all this kind of stuff. All of that stuff you can get on the AUR if you needed it. Um, but I, I think most of the reason that people gravitate to snaps and flat packs is just because they use like a slow release distribution like Ubuntu, which frankly shouldn't even, frankly, you know, I, I don't really feel like you should be running an operating system like that on your main computer. You can get by with that, but I really, I feel like, you know, it's in the same vein as Debian where it, it's a server operating system and it, it does very good at doing that sometimes. Um, but I feel like the demands nowadays, I, I, there's a reason that people more like normies, more like introductory Linux users are moving over to stuff like Manjaro or, you know, Artix or something like that, because a lot of these uh, faster updating distributions, you actually get the software that you want in your package managers and you don't have to worry about doing snap and flat packs. Like this is where I actually think the impetus for um, like, you know, people using these things actually comes from. I, I just don't feel, uh, and, and I'll say as someone who doesn't just, um, uh, you, you know, people email me all the time having problems with snaps and flat packs and all of it is part of a systematic issue. The systematic issue is that these do not properly interface with your Unix based Linux operating system. There's a standard, like everything is supposed to be, not supposed to be, but I mean, ideally works with the Unix philosophy. Programs do one thing and do it well, and importantly, they can interact with other programs. When you sandbox applications, that is why it's a big problem where if, oh, this dependency didn't work out or it wasn't packaged correctly or it caused this kind of font problem where it, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't look at my theme correctly. All of the, it's not just, it's not just one or two little things. Like I don't want to nitpick them saying that, um, oh, the depends, the dependency problem, which has been solved, I think on Flatpak is a, a deal breaker for me because it's part of a bigger issue. The bigger issue is going to be cropping up forever as long as these package systems exist because the maintainers, the developers, they're going to be playing whack-a-mole with these programs that all have the same source. The same sources, they are not, they're, they're not like just normal files on the computer that install like all the other programs on any other computer. Okay. That is the issue. And that is like, if you want a world like that, maybe the world of Mac OS is more to your liking, frankly. Um, cause I, I think they basically do stuff like that where they have massive applications you can't change. But, uh, you know, the reality uh, is, you know, this, this is, I th think someone said, yeah, someone said here, right here, you know, snaps are proprietary and a Trojan horse for more proprietary software. RMS didn't die for this. Um, and there's a sense in which that's true. Like there's a lot of, you know, th this is sort of becoming a platform. Uh, and this isn't necessarily per se, like going to come with the technology. But when I look at these things, I see that they are mostly being used as a way to get new users of Linux to continue to use the proprietary software they used on Windows. And it's like, if you're doing that, dude, I mean, like, no shame, like, if you're just familiar with something you like on Windows and you're using it because you you know how to use it and you don't know how to use Linux stuff and it looks like there's nothing out there because you don't know the, the field, I guess. Um, you know, nothing against that, but, you know, what you really want is people moving to a more productive user centric, extensible, um, uh, I guess, computing environment. And I see these 
programs, I see um, you know Snap and and Flatpak as undermining this fundamentally. They're turning they're good, turning Linux into little iOSs. That that's sort of how I see it. Um, but uh, anyway, that that's about it. I hope that maybe gets my vision of uh, why I find this such an issue. I mean, the weirdest thing to me, in addition to jumping to this Mandela effect universe where these things exist, is that no one. No one else is really questioning them. Like I, you know, I brought up that side a second ago, which you know is negative about them. But it's so rare to see anyone questioning these things, and that they're taking like they they've been organized by, the, by these companies and are taking over Linux. Okay, I, I at least think people should be a little bit more suspicious, and I I feel crazy that no one else is, uh, you know, with all the security concerns, with all of the frustration it causes users, all the emails I get about this kind of stuff all the time. Uh, like problems caused by these things, um, I'm just confused. More people are not like agitating against them. Okay, that that's my, that's all I have to say. Um, except for, <laughs> except for looking at this. So Brody, Brody actually has 10,000 subscribers. Congratulations. Um, he has a tenth of my subscribers. But look at this camera. It's ten times better than mine. I need to update my equipment. Uh, that's, that's how. It, actually, what what's the resolution here? And that's on 480p. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I need to get a better web, webcam. But you know, we don't. We know we like keeping it minimal. We like keeping it, uh, I, I don't know, just uh, casual on this channel. So anyway, look at all that lighting. Maybe I should get that. <laughs> I did turn on a lamp for this video. Okay, that's it. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Watch out for these things.